how does this LM function in R actually fit the regression model? You have the assumption that the expected value of Y, given that you observe that the predictor takes some value, is described by a line, right? It's A plus BX. And you have a bunch of data points where you observe X and Y, and you want to try to find the line that somehow best fits these points so that you really do get the mean of y given that x equals x. So you have these points. This looks like a reasonable line. Maybe this looks reasonable. How do you know what a and b should be to give you the average value of y for each value of x? Each value of a and b leads to a different line. There are two ways of arriving at a guess for a line. One framework is called least squares, and regression in other stories talks about this in chapter 8.1. Here, we have our picture with our x, y points being these blue dots. These are the data that we observe, and we want to find the red line, the a and b values for our linear regression model that best fit these points. And the least squares framework says what you can do is find a hat and b hat, your guesses for a and b, to minimize the sum of squared residuals. So for each a and b, you get a red line, a vertical distance from the line, and that's called the residual. So ri is the observed value yi minus a hat plus b hat xy. So minus the point on the line right below it. So A hat and B hat are any given guess for A and B. And you want to choose A hat and B hat under the least squares framework to minimize the sum of the squares of these distances from the real Ys to the predicted Ys that are predicted by the line. I think this is intuitive, right? That would be a good way to find the line that's the best fit to the data, is to just minimize the squares of these distances. You can write this out as the sum over all the people from i equals 1 to n, so the sum over these dots of the observed yi, which is the y value of the dots, minus a hat plus b hat xi, which is just the line. So it's the sum of the residuals, right? Each of these is the residual for a, a given person for the line defined by a hat and b hat squared. So you want to minimize, find the a hat and b hat that gives you the smallest sum of squared residuals. It should be SSR, but it's RSS, like residual sum of squares is what they always call it. And this might be a while ago, but in calculus, you learned how to minimize a function, right? This is a function of a hat and b hat. And if you want to find the a hat and b hat that minimize it, you can set its derivative with respect to a hat and b hat equal to zero. Find the a hat and b hat that lead to that derivative being zero. And in the simple regression case, a solution pops out in closed form. So like you just get a formula in terms of your data, like your X's and Y's, where your B hat that minimizes this is the sum of XI minus X bar, like the mean of the X's times YI over the variance of XI times N. It doesn't really matter what the exact form is. It's just you get a solution, right? So when R does LM of Y tilde X, it just computes this. It doesn't have to like search over candidate A's and B's. This is the formula for what B had it. So that's for the simple regression case where X is just uh, one dimensional, where X is a bunch of variables. You can express this solution in terms of matrices. And that's not important for you guys to know linear algebra or anything, but here is the expression for the solution. And again, R can just compute this by multiplying some matrices together, taking the inverse of a matrix, just simple kind of computations. That's why it's so fast to find the estimates of the coefficients. On the linear model, you also have this noise term where you assume that the outcome 
is equal to its expected value given the predictors plus random noise that has a certain standard deviation. So your estimate of that standard deviation is just, again, this should have parentheses, but it's just that the standard deviation of the residuals is your estimate for the standard deviation in the linear regression model. So this is the least square framework. That's framework one to arrive at the coefficient estimates where we didn't really use probability at all, just least squares. We didn't have any probability model for how those points are generated. There's nothing about the data generating process. We didn't use normality at all. Framework two is called maximum likelihood. And the idea here is that you should choose the A and B defining a line such that the probability of observing the points that were actually observed is maximized. Each point, the probability of observing a given yi, given that you observed a certain xi, and given the values of the regression parameters, is the normal density, the density for the outcome yi is normal with mean equal to the value of the line at xi, so a plus bxi, and then with standard deviation sigma. So then the probability of the whole vector of y, it's not just yi, because they're independent, is just the product of the densities of each of the y's. Each point has its own normal density around the mean defined by the line. And so you just multiply them all together. So for each person from one to n, for each dot, you multiply the probability of observing the yi that was observed, which is a normal density with mean, again, given by the line defined by a and b and standard deviation sigma. Under the maximum likelihood approach, the idea is you want to find the a and b that maximize this probability. You want to find the A and B such that the likelihood of the observed data is highest, and that's your estimate of A and B. There's this kind of messy formula for the normal density here, the density for Y given mean M and standard deviation sigma is this. Every time you have normal YI given A plus BXI up here, it's Y minus a plus bxi over here in place of m. And looking at this, you can actually see that finding the a hat and b hat that maximize this product is really the same thing as finding the a hat and b hat that minimize the sum over all the observations of the square difference, which is the residuals, it leads to exactly the same problem as the least squares framework. So coming at it from a maximum likelihood approach leads you to the exact same kind of algorithm. As the likelihood is actually equivalent to minimize the sum of squares. Just kind of interesting that you can motivate the same estimate of A and B from to seemingly pretty unrelated ways and their equivalent. One thing that's interesting is that in the least squares framework, we never use the assumption that the noise or error term is normally distributed. When we were estimating those coefficients, we just minimized the sum of the squared residuals. We never talked about a normal distribution at all even though we said that a normal distribution is part of the linear model, like we didn't seem to need it. The conditional expectation always does minimize what's called squared error loss, the sum of the squared residuals. So as long as the assumption that the conditional expectation of Y, given that you observe X is a line, as long as that is actually true, then least squares would be a good estimator for the coefficients because it would find the conditional expectation. It would find the A and B that give you the conditional expectation. So you really don't need normality at all for finding the right A and B. So 
do you need normality to find the standard errors of the coefficients? The standard error for the B coefficient, for example, is sigma, like that noise standard deviation divided by the variance of the x's. One tangent to note is that this implies that the higher the variance of the x's, the lower the standard error of B. The wider the spread of the x coordinates, the more certain you are of the slope of the line. And I think that this makes intuitive sense. This is the variance of x. Basically, it's the sum of all the xi's minus the mean of the x's, just the variance of x times n. And so the standard error divides by that. So the higher the variance of x, the lower the standard error. But sorry, that was a tangent. It's talking about, do we need normality for anything? To get this formula, you need that the variance of y given x is constant. And to then do inference about B, assuming that B hat is normal, you need the central limit theorem. So that just means you need a bunch of data points. But neither of those requires that Y is actually normally distributed around its conditional expectation given X. You don't actually need normality for that either. If you have a very small sample so that the central limit theorem doesn't actually kick in, then you do need normality. But for most of the data sets that you'd use in public health, data sets are they're going to be pretty big for the most part, and you don't need normality to get valid standard errors for B either. I have a link to a nice article about this that I think is clear and a good tutorial if anyone is interested in reading more. Okay, and then the one time when you really would need normality, or at least some assumption about what the distribution of the noise is, is if you want to make a prediction or quantify uncertainty about a prediction for a new individual unit. You'd get the prediction for its mean just from A and B, but then to know how far away from the line it's likely to be and with what probabilities, you need to know what the noise distribution is. And so for that, you need to assume normality or something. To recap the assumptions, this is in declining order of importance. The biggest assumption is linearity. The conditional expectation of Y, given that you observe certain values of the predictors, really is a line, a linear function. So that's by far the biggest assumption. You need the observations to be independent. They can't be a time series or like spatially related or something. You need to have constant variance of the outcome given the predictors. The noise needs to have constant variance, not necessarily be normal, but that's only important for standard errors. And even then, having non-constant variance can only mess you up in special scenarios. So it's only marginally important. And you never really need normality unless you have a very small sample size. And even then, it's pretty robust, the departures from normality, or if you're making predictions for individual unit. Okay, so... With the main assumption that you care about, we just saw is linearity. Is the expected value of y given x really a linear function? A way to check whether this is reasonable is plotting the residuals from your fitted model. So like y minus the predicted value of y. On the left, we have a scenario where a linear model is a good fit. It really was generated from like a linear model. And the residuals are a patternless cloud centered around a horizontal line through zero. And that's what it should look like if the linear model is a good fit. Here's an example where it was generated from x plus x squared. It's not linear. And we fit a linear model to it anyway. And that's the red line. That's the least squares fit, even though it doesn't really correspond to the conditional expectation. That line doesn't because, yeah, the real conditional expectation was x plus x squared. And then here's the plot of the fitted value for x against the residuals. And you can see that there's like a clear pattern. It's not this formless cloud centered around zero. And when you see patterns in residual plots, then that's always a strong signal that the linear 
model assumption was a bad one. 